while snow comes to Russia, in northern Africa the sun is cooling now and great armies of men and machines are stirring out of heat-soaked lethargy as summer dies to autumn and the sun burns not so fiercely. Earlier this year than usual, the cooler weathers come to the high plateau of Cyrenaica, to the arid, dusty desert round Tobruk, all along the shores of the Mediterranean, from Tripoli past Benghazi to Sidi Barani and on to the Mahdi base camp, where New Zealand troops are lining up with British and Australian, ready for anything that comes along. Westwards from the Nile, the troops are moving now into the unwatered wastes, selected by a cynical geography as the battleground of disputing ideologies. To support the gathering weight of manpower, material pours in along the sea routes, round the Cape from Britain and America, through the Red Sea from India, Australia and New Zealand. In its use, the men, now rested after Crete, are practiced to the last second of efficiency. Now comes the news that men and tanks, very many more than has ever been seen there before, with flight after flight of planes covering the sky above them, are pushing to the outposts. These men of the field artillery are famous already for the speed with which they bring their guns into action and the accuracy with which they use them. While German and Italian troops have sweated among the dry and rocky outcrops of Libya, constantly harried from that thorn in their side to brook, these men have rested beside the Nile and trained in the best possible circumstances. While the Italians have been struggling to run the gauntlet of the blockade between Sicily and Tripoli, Convoy after convoy has sailed into Egypt with munitions to strengthen the British armies threatening to sever the precarious hold of the Axis on the southern shores of Mussolini's Mare Nostrum. And while one great concentration of men and material is moving towards the enemy, more keeps pouring in. Slow to anger and slow to move, democracy is tapping the immense resources arrayed against Nazism. Shipload after shipload, one armada of seaborne and sea-free men after another, train load after train load. Thousands upon eager thousands they come this time to give the world a different story. At the point of the bayonet they have one time for us to prepare. Now they are getting ready. Out of the new world these men come to redress the balance of the old. Now it is their turn to call the tune. 